to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. And when we talk about adventure, the adventure begins uh, at the point that we abandon our lives to the reality of an intimate relationship with God uh, through His Son, Jesus Christ. We believe at Deep Adventure Ministries that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wildness of the absolute wild adventure of God's will. And if you're involved in the new evangelization in the Catholic Church, it's like get ready for the ride of your life because it's so. It, there's so many miracles happen almost every day, uh, so-called coincidences where people meet that you don't expect to meet, uh, adversity uh, from unexpected places and walls that just come crumbling down. And the, the whole key to the new evangelization is start walking and be available. People go, well, how did you get this radio show? How, how did you do the TV show? How did... How did you do this or how do you do that? And I just said it's because God knew I was willing. I may not be very good at what I do, but God said, I know at least that guy's going to give it his best shot. He's going to be willing to do what I'm asking him to do. And so don't wait to be the most skilled person, the most holy person in the world. It's kind of a come-as-you-are party. If you know Jesus and you're in love with Jesus and you're on a pilgrimage to heaven, then join, join us in the fray. Enter, enter into the big fight. And today uh, we are going – we are on um, – ready to break some chains uh, of bondage. Uh, people tell me sometimes, I heard someone came to me the other day and goes, I've been under a spiritual attack lately. And I, my response is almost an angry response. It's like, dude, you are not under spiritual attack. You're on the attack. You're, all, your, uh, all your armor is in the front. You should be on the attack, and all you're doing is you're facing resistance from the enemy because you're attacking him. So don't tell me you're under anything. By the power of God and by his spirit, you're on the attack and you are more than a conqueror. And our guest today, we have a guest that I think is going to inspire, challenge, equip, mobilize, and bring us uh, 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 to a place of freedom and a call to action. What, we're, what I'm talking about today is this whole pornified culture that we live in. We're going to attack pornography today in a way uh, that sets people free. Uh, in this culture today, it seems like uh, it's almost like the norm, especially in the younger generation, that they're going to be, you know, pornography is just part of their their everyday life. Uh, but we're going to bring we're going to bring it today. So we've got with us a real warrior, uh, Steve Picorni. He's written the book. Let me see. I got to reach for it. Slightly out of reach here. And the name of the book is called Redeemed Vision. For those of you watching on YouTube, I'm showing you the book cover now by Steve Picorni. And uh, just a really great synthesis, uh, a book with a great synthesis of, of, of logical, uh, scientific type understanding of, of the compulsion. And also the spiritual, he brings the theology of the body with him. So Steve P Picorni, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. It's an honor, Bear. Good morning. Hey, so you're in San Antonio, Texas. I am. I am. You fall in love with a girl who falls in love with Texas. You're moving to Texas, and uh, I have chosen a better part, and I shall not be deprived of it. <laughs> well, San Antonio is a beautiful city. Beautiful city. I, I uh, have great memories there. Uh, first of all, the Alamo. You know, remember mm -hmm. the Alamo, right? It's famous for. Uh, I think it's the Remember the Alamo that came. I think out of that movie by Pee Wee Herman, wasn't it? He, that's where he found <laughs> that was his it, bicycle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, he actually didn't. He was looking in the basement, but uh, he didn't. Unfortunately. It's bad when you go to the Alamo and you say, "Where's the basement?" They hate that because there is no basement. They don't Ouch. think it's they don't think it's funny. They hear it every day. But we two two events happened to me. I bicycled from San Diego, California, to Jacksonville, Florida, and San Antonio is the halfway point. Awesome. And uh, so going down by the river, the river walk or whatever you call it, that was so refreshing because the first. Mm -hmm. 1,250 miles that out of that 2,500 bicycle, mile bicycle ride is just desert and mountains. And then you get to luscious San Antonio. It's just, oh, thank God. But then, the on, our, yeah, and then on our long ride home TV show, uh, it was our, it, you know, long ride home. We rode from Jackson to Bill, Florida, basically back to San Diego on our motorcycles. 
Uh, you know, I bicycled from San Diego to Jacksonville the first time, but then I probably got smarter and rode a motorcycle the next day. But yeah, we love San Antonio. We love the people of Texas. So uh, we're glad to have you on our show. Uh, it's great we, to be. Here. Yeah. So, um, you know, you you're uh, you can you give us a little bit of your CV? Just a little, just a just a highlight, not your testimony, but we know yeah. that you're educated uh, at uh, Steubenville, and you got your. Uh, give us a little bit of that. Give yourself a little street sure. cred. Sure. So um, besides just uh, uh, personal experiences of life, uh, I have a BA in philosophy from John Carroll University in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, I have a, a master's in theology with a specialization in catechetics from the from Franciscan University of Steubenville. I also have a uh, MTS, a master's in sacred theology uh, from the John Paul II Institute in uh, Washington, D.C. So uh, yeah, it's been I mean, there's no one many else years I'd, of my life. No one else I'd rather talk to. But you're kind of a suave guy. For those of you who can't see him, because you're not watching him on YouTube, you're listening on the radio. Uh, he's kind of suave, kind of he, he dresses. Uh, Why? Thank you. Dresses in a very, I don't know how to say it. He's just so cool, and you know he he debonair uh, is the word you're looking for. And I, I, debonair, yeah, and and uh, <laughs> kind of like the so so you you were you were married how many years ago? Nine years ago, I think you said something like that. Mm -hmm. It's been nine years, yeah. and you're such a romantic guy that you took your wife, I believe, to <laughs> to Rome or to Italy, right, for your honeymoon. Yeah, we did. Well, we did eight hours in Dublin. Uh, we uh, uh, went swimming in the in the Guinness factory. Well, yeah, um, I was going to say, and, dude, I was I was there uh, six eight months ago, and I was so sick I couldn't even leave the hotel room. I, I oh, had my hotel room three blocks from oh, the Guinness place. <laughs> oh man, that's torture. So, that's yeah, torture. I know. <laughs> so, so, so you um, went for a swim in the Guinness. Uh, I was just at the uh, the uh, whiskey uh, uh, maker's mark in, oh. in Jim Beam's distilleries two weeks ago. Uh, Oh, really, man, really, pretty cool. So you start out as a good Catholic, swimming at the at the mm -hmm. the Guinness uh, uh, <laughs> brewery, and then what? There you go. And then we flew down to flew down to Rome, but didn't stay there. We just flew in there and took a train up to we went to Florence. And um, but before that whole trip, um, uh, I have not always been the most um, best dressed, shall not, we say? Not, not as um, you are today. So impressed with your bow tie and your tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I, I try to keep it real. Uh, so I, uh, I took that fateful trip as a single guy to Walmart, um, to Wally World, as we like to say. And um, I, I bought shorts. Um, and unbeknownst to me, until we got to Venice, um, did I? And this is how uh, clueless I was. Maybe madly in love. Um, I was wearing. Uh, they were swim trunks. And you, being from Hawaii, um, you know the the uh, the lovely lush colors and and floral patterns because it's only on it's only in Hawaiian clothing. Bear, I don't get it. Maybe you can explain it. That like uh, flowers are okay for guys. We're not usually good with that, but it's it's Hawaiian clothing. We're like, all right, rock on. So um, yeah, I'm walking around with that. I literally can't find. I think it was when I couldn't find. Um, uh, pockets in my shorts that you realized, realized oh my gosh yeah. <laughs> and so you so, didn't stand um, out in rome as an american did you no not at all and i and i hadn't lived there in 2005 for four months so i didn't know any of those rules at all so, so yeah um, you you knew better but you just uh you're just a <laughs> typical guy hey, let me ask you this question from the time you walked into the walmart till the time you walked out how many seconds was it Oh, I, I don't know, eighty nine point five. Yeah, so you went in I, on yeah. a mission. I'm gonna grab. Last oh. place you want to do is go shopping. Hunter. You were on a hunting oh, mission. You grab oh, something that fit you, and you go running out of the store. And then you're gonna be the suave, romantic <laughs> man with your yeah. with your wife in uh, in 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 Italy. But you did get to live in Italy for a, a, a few years. You, I think, right? I, I for for four months actually, I was able to um, use the bathroom on the Roman Forum. Why can I say that? Because I lived on the Roman Forum, right next to uh, Saints Cosmas and Damian, and literally a stone's throw away from the uh, the Colosseum. So uh, and and the Roman and yeah, and the Forum obviously there. So uh, that was a blessing, and being able to study at the at the Angelicum there, same place where uh, Saint John Paul the Great studied many many years ago and taught there. Um, so that was a. Um, a really beautiful thing, and then obviously getting to travel throughout the, throughout Europe and uh, being able to end there, and I, being actually um, we were there during the time uh, when John Paul passed and Benedict ascend, ascended the, oh the papal throne. Wow, um, amazing! And even even the night there, and I mean that's a that's a story and a half if we want to go into it. But basically, being in Poland two weeks prior, um, then being in the square the night John no Paul passed away. Kidding. Wow, um, and and seeing the Polish crowds there, and and I. To a, to a certain extent, 
um, understanding um, the, the Polish people there um, truly, it was a gift of God, shall I say, to, to be able yeah. to be granted. Poland is one of the last. Then, yeah, go ahead. No, no, and go ahead, please. Well, Poland is one of the last strongholds now, you know, of Catholicism. Uh, but you know, so so let's let's let's. I want to really dig into this this subject. We're going to get into the subject of uh, uh, how we're going to fight and break chains in the area of pornography. But first, I, I think our, our our audience would like to know a little bit about your own personal journey with the Lord and. And it wasn't it wasn't easy. I know that. Uh, give us give us kind of like, don't be too brief, but uh, give us kind of like sure. that what that journey has been. Sure. Oh, so you know what, I grew I, you know up- what, Steve? I gotta I gotta take a break. I'm getting a signal from my producer. We've already used up the first ten minutes just talking about your wardrobe. What a waste of time. <laughs> no, but you should look at him, guys. He looks beautiful. Uh, this is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You can go to our website, deepadventure.com. Or you can go to for, uh, for to find us, or you can go to freedom.coaching.net to find more out about Steve. And don't forget to go to our YouTube channel and press the subscribe button. YouTube has said us if we can add about 700 more people, they're going to really amp up uh, our. If, if you can subscribe to our our channel, Bear Wozniak on YouTube, they're going to amp up their their uh, promoting of our of our website. So please visit there and go to our website, deepadventure.com, where you can buy my books and and um, and. Subscribe to our newsletter. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak adventure. You know, the other day, uh, my son Shane was flying a drone out over the ocean and he zooms in on this thing uh, swimming, and he realizes it's about a five-foot bull shark. And he sent me the video of it. Uh, think about Hawaii as you're, I mean, in, in Florida, where I am at the moment. I live in Hawaii half the time. Uh, the, the, the water here is, is a little bit more murky, and it's much more sharky. In Hawaii, you can be out paddling, and you'll see the shark eight feet away from you or even sometimes 100 feet down. They see you, and you see them, and they know you're not on their, their menu, so they food menu, so they usually leave you alone. But in Florida, it's kind of murky, and you can get, you can get uh, kind of a wake-up call from the sharks there, uh, for, you know, here. Uh, normally, they're not in, inside the uh, surf zone, but I've seen several sharks inside the surf zone, especially on murky days. I remember I was uh, surfing with my son Jeremiah in Maui outside my parents' uh, house at a reef, and it had been a rainy day, and there was a little bit of muddy water in the, in the uh, flowing out of a river. And I said to my son, we need to leave. This is sharky water. We went about an eighth of a mile away, paddled over, and surfed a beautiful break. And then later that day, we found out someone got bit um, at, that, at that location where we had been. And the lesson is don't be in murky water. I mean, the, 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 the Catholic, Catholic Church teaches to avoid the near occasion of sin. There are some places you know you shouldn't go on the, on the Internet. There's some bars you shouldn't attend. There's some clubs you shouldn't go to. There's certain places and certain people you should hang out with. And if you do, you're going to probably get bit. Now, my best friend, one of my, one of my good friends, Archie Kalepa, was the head lifeguard in Maui for many years. And I remember being with him when he, was, when he got a walkie-talkie signal sent to him. And they said someone uh, got bit by a shark. Now, Archie is the kind of guy who jumped out of a... Uh, uh, a helicopter to swim with a big uh, tiger shark uh, and face him. Uh, he trained for it. It's a Hawaiian sort of tradition that he trained for. Uh, but when this guy got bit, he goes, where did he get bit? In the butt? And they go, yeah. He goes, he should have turned and fought him. Right? He was swimming away and running instead of turning and fighting him. As you know, the, the, the best approach with the shark is to punch him in the nose because it's so sensitive. But uh, he was upset that the guy didn't fight. But they rescued him. <clears throat> so the point is, two things about sharks. Stay out of sharky water. Don't go where you, where, avoid the near occasion of sin. There's certain places you shouldn't go uh, to, so that you avoid on, on the internet and things like that. The second thing is, if you find yourself under attack by the, the, our pornified culture, punch it in the face and fight back. And that's why Steve Picorni is here. Steve, before we get into that, that uh, get, helping people get on chain from this compulsion, tell us a little bit about your personal journey. Sure. So I grew up in a, a, I had a mom, dad, uh, brother, didn't have a dog. I have a dog now. The dog's stupid, but I have a dog. Um, and all that changed when I was, uh, I was five. Uh, my dad wanted to get rich quick. Uh, my mom said no. Um, and, and so he did something unthinkable, 
to a lot of us. Um, he wagered our house on, on basically the stock market. The deal lost. And uh, he thought we lost everything, so he thought the best thing to do was to kill himself. And so um, he locked himself in the garage door, turned on the engine, and a half an hour later, when my mom had pulled him out, his short-term memory uh, was gone. So he was moved to a, um, a nursing home um, for uh, for vets. And my dad had been um, – he'd done that because he was a vet in, in Vietnam. And he thought, you know, at least he's got something. We'll have something we'll be provided for. Um, so again, listening to the spirit of fear instead of, shall we say, like the analogy, punching life in the face and going at it. Um, and so I grew up pretty much without a father, not really knowing that. And anybody who knows knows that the milieu of of living without a father, and and this is the this is the world we live in. And many of us having that notion of of fatherlessness. Um, I know that intimately, and the pain that goes along with that, and the the lack of uh, of, of security in my own identity. And so. Um, when I uh, fast forward to, to 17, my uh, my dad um, developed brain and lung cancer, brain and lung cancer. Um, he uh, I was privileged with the opportunity to to sit with him right before he died um, and to actually forgive him for the first time in my life. Um, and that would be a, a really important part going forward in my story. But um, it was seventh grade. I got exposed to pornography for the first time. Um, this is before the Internet hit. Um, and so videos from a, from a quote unquote friend of mine, um, internet comes along a little bit later. Um, and because of the plethora of images and just like the chemicals that are stirred up in the brain, which I knew nothing of till many, many years later, um, this quickly became a compulsion and it became something I could not control, um, something that, that controlled me and I became a slave. And I, in fact, I like to, you know, we've, we've heard of the movie 12 years a slave. Well, I was 12 years plus a slave, um, thinking this will be the rest of my life. I will never get free. And the analogy I like to use bear is like a woman who goes to confession week after week, um, hearing she's forgiven for having participated in an, abor- in, a, in abortion. Um, she can't forgive herself. Um, that, that's, that was me. I thought I will never be free from this. This is just my life. Um, I will have to deal with sin management. And so, but, but God had other ideas because I went to, uh, many, many of our listeners are familiar with Franciscan University of Steubenville and, um, and there was a, uh, God showed up, shall we say, because, um, uh, they have festivals of praises there, you know, about 2000 people praising God and heard that night. Um, the first, first one I was there back in 2003, um, from Isaiah 43, 19, behold, I am doing something new. Do you not perceive it? Streams of living water will begin to flow. And it was, what was happening was I was opening my heart to God because I, you know, I'd gone to, I'd, I'd actually been in four years of seminary. Um, I'd learned a lot about the faith there, but it's still, this compulsion was with me, but here God wanted to do something very new. Okay. And so it was two weeks later, uh, and I started been going to daily mass, receiving the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. And, um, it was there, um, that I received the, uh, God, God broke through. I, I, all the, the love that I was receiving from Jesus, um, it began to hit me that it wasn't just Jesus. It was the father. It was one that I thought that had abandoned me, had walked out on me, had, had left me for years. He had always been carrying me and all he wanted me to do. Um, he wanted me to stop struggling and just be held. And, and, and I think for a lot of us as men, we're, we're very uncomfortable with that because you know, what is that? But this is the intimacy. This is the father, fatherly and son intimacy that we really need in our life. And so for me, um, this opened the doors and, and I, I was able to come to a place of, of peace there. And right at that moment, I also discovered, um, there was genuine freedom that was given to me, a grace that was given to me of freedom that happened from, uh, from this, I, I, this description I, I say is these chains dropping off me and like St. Augustine picking up picking up the scriptures, reading, put on Christ Jesus and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. There was f- genuine freedom. And, and so everything was great, right, Bear? Well, for about maybe four months, right? And I, there was genuine internal freedom. I had unlimited, unfettered internet access. So there was no problem. Um, but like the like Peter who takes his his, um, his eyes off um, Jesus, I sink back into the what, what I call the septic tank of our culture and sink back because it's everywhere, right? And and uh, you you use that notion of if the whole world's murky and dark, right? Uh, that, or or the the murky and dark waters you want to avoid them. Well, what if the whole world is murky and dark? What do you do there? Well, we've got to 
we've got to seek light and then we got to unveil light to the world. So uh, three things that were brought to me. And again, this is over a course of a few years uh, of searching, trying to figure this out. Um, and pieces were given me. One was called Theophastic Prayer, where a lot of the wounds that I had uh, going what is that? into. What is, what is that? Sure. Theophastic prayer, uh, it's basically um, intensive prayer where basically um, your emotions, our emotions are like smoke that leads to a fire. So you're doing visualization prayer. And I'd, I'd learned this through an old spiritual director um, and it was helpful. The problem with it is, though, um, and it's good. I mean, I don't want to downplay it for what it is, but you have to feel those emotions. So it's kind of like being re-traumatized. And that's not a very pleasant you place to be. certainly were traumatized. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and pornography use is traumatic. It's it's an, it's a it's the opposite of how we're supposed to be living our sexuality out, which we can go into. But then um, they're also discovering something called intensive trauma therapy, which uh, it's a it's a basically a very simple process. It's not shock therapy, um, but basically writing and drawing, where a lot of healing. It's in a period of about thirty five hours. Uh, so much of my shame was eviscerated. And then what, what really sealed the deal, and, and again, if I would have known this years years before, um, I think my story would have been different, is discovering the church's incredible vision for the body. Uh, and Because I I'd learned theology of the body, but being experiential, uh, specifically I'm talking about visual art. The fact where the body is exposed appropriately through sacred art um, and healthy images there. Um, what ended up happening was this this desire the desire for for pornography basically that that's that was sealed forever in the in the fact that the the opposite of I have no desire for that so I, I as I say to many people I would I'd rather die than lust because lust is a to to paraphrase C S Lewis a weak whimpering thing compared to freedom compared to desire set to full to full flight and well, so we- I. I yeah, got to take a quick little break here. We got to take a quick little break here. We're talking with Steve McCorney, and we're going to break some chains today, right, Steve? Amen. Um, and, and by the power, it. by the power of the Holy Spirit, and it's just bringing all this, this, this uh, compulsion, this entrapment to pornography. That anyone who, anyone who acts on lust, uh, there is that feeling of just guilt and shame, and isolation, and and the feeling of can you ever, can you ever break out of it? And every day, every man that, that I know of it, it has to fight this because of our, the way our culture throws it at us constantly. Uh, and so we're going to talk more about this great deep change in our heart that God can bring. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I feel like growling right now. If I could, I would because I think something really is going to happen great on the next segment. We're going to give you guys, um, we're going to bring to you some truth that will help set you free. Be right back. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Um, you know, in our culture today, I, I, we, I hear this word uh, that I'm not a big fan of. The word is called accountability. I hear it all the time. I need to be with our other brothers that are going to hold me accountable. Dude, I'm a man. I don't need to be held accountable. What I need to be is challenged, equipped, and mobilized. I need to be inspired. I need to have my heart changed. I don't need to be a, a, a child that needs to be led... led uh, Led, led along and, and, and told what to do and what not to do. And, and, you know, I think the word accountability, that whole word is something where people are saying, I need a brother to help me. That is 100% true. But what we need from our brothers is brothers that will lead us by example, brothers that will challenge us, brothers that will equip us, brothers that will help mobilize us, brothers that will inspire us. Uh, we need brotherhood, uh, but the word accountability makes me feel like I'm a sixth grader in a, in a, in a hallway. I know people use it and they I hear it being used more often, but it just, it just, I, it goads me and it's okay if it goads you a bit too, but that's not a reason for you not to seek out brotherhood. You can't win this fight, uh, without brotherhood. It's like two guys in a dark alley, you know, they, with their backs to each other, ready to fight anyone coming from any direction. We need brothers. And so that's why we have our, our, uh, cool, uh, private secret, Facebook group called Bears Man Cave. You can't join it. First of all, unless you're a man of confirmation age or older, you cannot join it unless you, uh, unless you go to our website, deepadventure.com. And you can't join it unless you provide a, a $10 a month uh, a subscription fee. We gotta, we're going to make you man up and help support the ministry that, 
that you're the, the that you're receiving from. And when you go there though to the private Facebook group, there's real men there, and we talk about real. We we men will share what's going on in their lives, and we we and everything there is kept a secret. And we challenge and encourage and and love one another on that private Facebook group. And then every two or three weeks we have a Zoom meetup where we may have. 10 to 20 guys, 30 guys from around the world uh, have a, a, two, a two-way dialogue with each other. We, I usually interview one of the men, and then we, uh, we go through my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, just as a, a way of opening up the conversation to talk about real stuff. Another thing we have at the Bears Man Cave, some people don't get this, but the people who do really, really dig on it. Uh, we're going to the Napa Institute, by the way, tomorrow, and I'm providing all the cigars for the nine o'clock cigar uh, cigar night, which is one of the greatest parts of that institute, because people gather together to have a cigar. A cigar is a forty-five minute event where you stop and you talk, and so we have the Bears Man Cave cigar sampler. It's seven seven cigars, each of the seven virtues, and when you when each is the four milder blends are 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 uh, are uh, the cardinal virtues. The three Maduro blends are theological virtues, but every one of those. You want peel the label, and it shows the art, the Renaissance artwork of the uh, the woman who represents that virtue. But you can't enjoy the smoke without taking off uh, part, of, taking off the label. And in there is a quote from my book on that particular virtue. And I'm hearing from men, they invite a guy over who would never go into the church basement to go to a that man is you program, which I, by the way, I love a lot. I helped start it in Hawaii. But they'll go sit on the back deck with you, and they'll have a cigar with you. They'll have a shot of whiskey with you. Uh, or maybe you have coffee with them, or maybe you have a, a, a breakfast with them. But it's time for men uh, to gather together. And there's, if, you, if you don't have a men's group, for example, in your church, it's your fault. So start one. It only takes you and two other men to start one. But uh, go to our website and join the Bears Man Cave. Become part of our, our, our uh, cigar meetups about every two or three weeks or on our, our, media, our video chat. And, and, and the reason why we have the Man Cave is we want to help you start your own local uh, man cave. Uh, Father Gino, Monsignor Gino at the Vatican, when I met with him last year at the Vatican, he said, he's in charge of the new evangelization in the English-speaking world. He said, no one's doing what you're doing. You're doing the hard thing. You're going out beyond the church walls and reaching people. And that's what, that's what the man cave is about, is to, get, to invite people that don't go to church, maybe never even been to a church, and evangelize them. So we have with us as a guest today, just the kind of man the man cave is about, and just the kind of man that the show is about, our ministry is about, a man who has broken free from chains that enchained him and is now saying, I'm, I, we're coming after you. We're going to help you get set free. Uh, and so we have Steve Picorni with us who wrote the book Redeemed Vision, and we're going to talk about, we're going to break some chains in that area of, of uh, pornography compulsion. Steve, uh, I don't even know where we left off in the last segment, but uh, tell us more well, about your journey. I'll, I'll, well, jump, jump in. in the I'll jump in because I, I mean, I want to, I just want to totally want to affirm something we've been doing for years here in San Antonio. Um, it's just a group of guys. We meet super early in the morning. Um, I know that men as you meets usually on Saturday morning, but um, for a lot of us, Saturday morning is family time and, and uh, evening time is impossible many times because we got young, we've got young kids. So we meet early in the morning, like on a weekday. And we've do, we've been doing uh, doing focusing on, on masculine formation, and it's been really really helpful because I know like you know just the different ebbs and flows of life, different challenges come in. Um, I need brotherhood, and I think that's one of the things that, that dovetails into the discussion that we're we're talking about today. So many so many guys feel isolated, they feel cut off, they feel they can't express themselves, um, feel just not understood, um, whatever lack of things. So when they know they have guys who have their back that aren't going to, it's not judging them as a person, but really wants to help hold them up. Do you want to hold them to accountability in the best sense of word of the word for them to become the best version of themselves? Um, that's been incredibly helpful in my life and my journey. Um, and so thank you for what you're doing with that. Awesome. What do you think about the difference? I, I used to say masculine formation, and I'm done saying that now too. I just cut to the chase, manly formation, because now mm -hmm. with all the gender confusion, who knows, you know? So yeah. let's just be men. It's okay to be yeah. a man. You don't have to you know, uh, Jason Jones, a friend of mine, was talking to me the other day how sometimes when he goes into a church and he speaks, uh, people feel a little triggered maybe. I don't know what the word is they say now. And, uh, no and, 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 and some of the women are a little bit afraid. Well, let's put it this way. Sometimes you should be a little bit of afraid of a man because a man it, it should exude power, exude confidence, exude um, 
just like a rock that can't be moved. And not that uh, I'm not trying to call on men to be macho. That's a bunch of BS. But but to mm-hmm. call on men to uh, to be a manly and of course to be servant leaders. Don't apologize for being a man anymore. I, I see this. I see what I see. The real men when I was young, the young older men than than me, these were tough guys. You know, they they didn't talk about their their uh, their their challenges. They fought them. You know, they fought them together, but they didn't just sit and whine at the TV at night. They went. They they lived a full, rich, uh, tough life. So I'm done apologizing for being a man. I don't even use the word masculine anymore. I say manly virtue, manly spirituality. Right. So because now they've they've t- they've stolen the word masculine from us too, right? So, so well, tell nobody us. knows what that is. We've eviscerated it. The meaning in many yeah, cases. We, yeah, and pornography more than anything uh, uh, emasculates a man. It's the furthest thing from being a man. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, we I see this all the time. I mean, you have this idea, you have this notion here that I mean, with pornography, is that the 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 purpose of my life, the meaning of life, there is about pursuing pleasure, right? And if you look at the the heart of man and and our our great witness of man through Jesus Christ, right? It was never about pursuing pleasure. It was about pursuing what is best for the other, right? And how can I serve? How can I put myself out there? And you mentioned about you know having a little bit of uh, trepidation around Jesus, right? Literally power came out of him. You remember the woman who was bleeding for 12 years. Oh my gosh. And, and, uh, and her trembling thereafter, but it wasn't a trembling from, oh my gosh, he's going to destroy me. But this, um, but he's so alive, this vibrancy here. Um, and with pornography itself, it basically saps our energy. I mean, many of us, you know, who have been involved with pornography, you get involved with pornography, masturbation, literally saps your energy um, from here. But it also just changes your your worldview where we become very self-centered into who we are, um, into what we think we're all about. Um, And this is where a lot of the guilt and shame comes in, because when you violate what's called the law of the gift, that we are called and created to be gifts to the world, when we violate that, we feel this because we're we're built that it's this it's as strong a law maybe stronger than the law of gravity in that you f- try to jump off a building without without the appropriate parachute or whatever you're going to hit the ground and you're going to splat right you try to fight against the law of, of the gift and and if everything in your life is focused on you this is where it bec- it becomes very inverted it becomes empty and the golem effect begins to come in and and this this notion of my precious and I want to possess this and what ends up happening it possesses us and so that guilt and shame as you you mentioned earlier um, is crippling and it's crippling and so many so many guys are, are just trapped in this and and now now especially with my work with freedom coaching I I see more and more women that I, I I've begun to work with who are also believing the lie that in order for them to be women, they got to be like broken men. And so, you know, this this dichotomy here um, really plays off itself, that when men fail to stand up to be men, and very few of us are learning what it actually means, means to be a man. We have not had our fathers that have been present to us. We like when we go into church, the homilies themselves. I'm, I, I I love I love our church and I love priests, but many of these these homilies have nothing to do with reality in many cases, and and so many guys just don't feel uh, they're just without a uh, their ship without a rudder, and they're they were not no one there to challenge anywhere. them. No one there to challenge yeah. them. We're talking with Steve Picorni. Uh, we're going to be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. You can find him at freedom-coaching.net. And by all means, this book, I, we're going to have to have you back, Steve, because we're barely scratching the surface, re, uh, the surface of this. Redeemed Vision, is, uh, just looking at the, the chapter out, uh, outlines tells you uh, what a powerful book it is. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. You, please go to our website. Uh, go to our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak. You can watch this show on YouTube. And please subscribe because it helps us further our mission. We'll be right back. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide. And I think I just got to get out of the way of this guy and let Steve Picorni just run with the next 11 minutes. He's got so much on his mind to share about unchaining us uh, from pornography, the compulsion for pornography. Um, just just run with I want to ask you this question. First of all, some chemical stuff happens, right? It's, it's not an addict. I, I don't like to call it an addiction, but 
But what 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 is the science behind pornography now, and and how can tell? I want now for you to, to identify it and tell us how to get, how how people can get free from it. Sure. <laughs> okay. Big big question. Let's 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 begin. The notion first I would say is pornography is not an addiction but a compulsion. How can I say that? Okay. The very briefly, um, and it was Greg Popcheck actually, Dr. Greg Popcheck. Many of our listeners are familiar with with him. Kind of um, alerted me to this. This, it's a great show, alerted me to this about two years ago that the term, uh, they did some studies on this, the term addiction actually um, is unhelpful because it many times is the idea once hooked, always hooked, okay? And we're talking about something that's very serious, something that's to be dealt with. I've been doing coaching uh, with those involved with pornography, attraction, and compulsion um, since uh, since 2011. So I'm not here to mess around with this stuff, but, but I do wanna make the bold claim that some people may not buy, but we've gotta say it, that we can't can be free from the desire to look at pornified images. I like to use the analogy, like if you ever heard of, um, uh, if you heard of uh, down in, in Amish country, if you ever been to Amish country, I don't know if in your rides, Barry, doing that, when you got horse and buggies and you got the uh, the horses, when they got to go, well, they go and they release road apples. And, and I always ask people, right, do you ever have a desire to go and pick up the, would you ever pick up the road apple and eat it? And uh, sorry to be graphic here. Well, but, I don't think um, you're graphic it, enough. What we're talking about is the horse takes a dump. I used to be yeah, in the Corlitas right. Cowboys marching band in sixth grade, and we always followed the horses. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay. So um, good. I'm glad you got that image. So um, if you're eating food, <laughs> congratulations. You're welcome. So from this, um, people are like, I would never do that. That's disgusting. Why? The reason is because you see the road apple for what the road apple is. You see it as a piece of garbage, piece of, piece of crap, and um, I'm gonna get blipped on that maybe. And um, and then um, but and the very thought is unthinkable. Well, in a very real sense, right? Pornography is the same exact thing, right? There is something beautiful in there. There's where the attraction comes in, but but in in the way in which those images, those people are being presented. It's not beautiful, but we've been trained, programmed um, to believe that's what beauty is. That's what sexuality is. That's what sex is. And we should go for that. And that's the lie. And this fits into the whole chemical compulsion. And by the way, I didn't know any of the, the chemicals of the brain. I didn't know any of that till I was in my tail end of my of my compulsion and pornography. If I would have learned this many years prior I think it would have helped dramatically to realize, oh my gosh, this is really serious. So you got secular organizations like Fight the New Drug, which is heavily into um, exposing uh, the truth about pornography and the chemicals here, which is great. So we can use some of that information in our battle going forward. So you have different chemicals, dopamine, norepinephrine, oxytocin, um, uh, serotonin. Those different chemicals are found in the brain. And they are the exact same chemicals that are stirred up during during our our um, during uh, pornography use that happen also during healthy sexual intercourse, but the it's the exact same uh, it's the the, exa- the 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 opposite effect that happens here where dopamine gives un, this unwavering energy and and goal directed focus where I'm supposed to be focused on my wife and loving her now I'm absolutely zoned in and focused on on these images. And I can't say no to them. And, and as our dopamine receptors, right, we, uh, there's things called dopamine receptors where the more they get submerged, so we say, with that chemical and we do it long enough, they begin to shrink. And this is important because when they shrink, then guess what? To get the same high, then we got to do something more and more. So something, say we were into just uh, see, looking at, at, at pictures of women, of, of naked women. And that was what what Playboy magazine was for a while, right? Then you get to the the images and video that we see online. And those are those are exciting for a while. But you look at those for a while, they become less interesting. Then we got to get into video of men and women in, 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 in intercourse. And I would argue it's not intercourse at all. It's just lustful, lustful actions. And then it even can, can lead down further levels of depravity where a guy I know in high school spent eight years in jail, I think, I think it was eight years, um, for possessing hundreds of thousands of images of child pornography. Where does that come from? Nobody grows up saying, you know, I hope I can hurt people. No, it's because these chemicals, partly, is that's how it's playing in us. 
And then also I would say, we never learned what it means to be a man. And so these chemicals, and then you take another chemical, dopamine, or norepinephrine, right? This is the excitement chemical. That's like a, um, the, the rush and a high, like on a roller coaster, right? And that's exciting. And these, the images can be burned into our brain. In fact, we can see um, an image can go into our eyes at 0. 0.006 seconds, okay, super quick. And these, and especially when we're dealing with a highly emotionally charged image, it can be burned into our brain and we can remember this forever. In a marriage, this is awesome because in those troubled, difficult times, everybody's got it in marriage. Marriage is hard. Go into marriage expecting it to be hard. That's going to be the fight of your life that you're going to need grace and you'll be okay. When we go into it and think it's going to be easy and it's all about serving me and my pleasure, that's the problem here. And so when we have those difficulties in marriage, this is where that chemical norepinephrine can really help because it's we remember those good times and we're going to make it through these hard times. But here with, uh, with pornography use, these are burned into our brains in our hippocampus. That's the hard drive of our brain. And then um, – and then basically when we're trying to fight against this, maybe we're, you know, I think, okay, I'm realizing pornography is a bad thing. These images will pop up in our brain at the most unlikely time. Like when's the most popular time for us as Catholics? At mass, specifically before we're about to receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Our bridegroom is giving his body to us as bride. Yes, Barry, you are part of the bride. You got to put on a beautiful white dress and walk around. No, you are a man through and through. But in relation to God, we receive his love. And so we must receive there. And if that is the true notion of what marriage is, that's what marriages on earth are pointing us to, the evil one. And yes, there's a there's a major spiritual and battle battle component here that comes in here um, from from this is the evil one is going to want to try to get us distracted from what we should really be focusing on. And so instead of focusing on the beauty of marital intimacy, we're focused on these images that are leading us to blindness. So let, let, let me ask you this. Um, the difference between lust and love, what define intimacy and Especially the younger generation, I think, has kind of lost their way as far as uh, go go there. For, we've only got a few more minutes, but go there for us for a few bit about what real intimacy sure. is. So a uh, simple de definition. Some people have heard this intimacy into me. See for a person to see me for me and to love me for me. Like it's been it's been said um, that the four deepest desires of the human heart are to love and be loved to see and be seen, right? When we're in the presence of someone, we want them to come to understand us. We wanna go deeper into that relationship. This is what we are longing for. You mentioned about the man cave. This is, you know, men, we, we put up our walls. We're really good at that, but laying down, letting those walls down, letting someone in to be able to establish genuine bonds of communion with others, this is what we're longing for. In our world, when we say the word, the word intimacy, what it means in many cases is genital intimacy. Okay, or even even more, it's 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 not real real intimacy. It's not sharing. It's genital pleasure, right? Whereas here, yes, I said genitals on EWTN radio. Thank you. So from this here, we have this. What we are looking for is for this deep bond and sharing of our our of, of ourselves. It's this gift of ourselves. And if you look at Catechism paragraph twenty three thirty two, this is a major part of our sexual. Our sexuality. Sexuality is supposed to form bonds of communion with others. So you take this issue of pornography, it's stealing our capacity for genuine intimacy because you can't, there's a, there's a bonding with an image and an image itself where there's no relationship between that, uh, behind that. For instance, right, we see our, our wife or our children in a picture, there's a relationship behind there and we want to grow in intimacy with that and it helps to remember and there's, there's beautiful things that come from that. Whereas we flip this around here, we don't know this person from anything. And if we're trying to use another human being as a means of our own selfish sexual gratification, that's what lust is. Um, it's going to be an inversion of those emotions where we're not going to find fulfillment. We're not going to find happiness, but instead that shame so and we, guilt there so the, and the, cripples us. So we're going to have to have you back, Steve. But the thing is, is I know to me, the solution to, to prayer, to, to pornography or, or, or that those areas of lust, honestly, is time with the Lord. Uh, falling in love with Jesus, uh, why would you want to substitute uh, that that sweetness of being with the Lord for something like that? And uh, then grace kind of takes over. It's a cooperation with God's grace. But we're talking with Steve McCorney. His book, 
uh, redeemed vision. And Stephen, we're done. I hope you'll write me an email. We'll get you back on the show here in the next couple of months awesome. so we can continue our dialogue. This is uh, the the attack of Satan right now is against the family. Uh, we learned that from from uh, the apparition of Mary, and it's true. And the and the point of the the the, the main attack is against men. And uh, and we need to now uh, stand our ground, as Ephesians six says. Nehemiah, step into the breach, help rebuild the wall, and be a real man. We've got more. We can cover this more, but you can go to Freedom Coat freedom-coaching.net, and get more from Steve Picorni, Picorni, and we will be back with him. We'll get you back here soon. Uh, and you can go to deepadventure.com and join us on our quest. And uh, please subscribe to our newsletter, Join Bears Man Cave, too. And for the women, we have this new thing we're doing called Bears Mug Club. Actually, it's for everyone. And uh, make, we're going to have some video meetups, too, doing that. So love you guys. We'll be, ba- be back next week with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Until then, viva Cristo Rey, and may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks, Steve. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10 episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group. All at bearwasning.com.